meditate on the divine spirit for the peace and harmony of the whole humanity shanti 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 hi hari om tat sat peace 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 be unto all om stapakaya chadamasya sarvadharmaswarupine stapakaya chadamasya sarvadharmaswarupine avatar varishthay ram krishna yate nama asato ma tat gamaya tamaso ma jodir gamaya mrityor ma mritam gamaya om shanti 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 let us bow down to shri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality this is the vedic prayer very significant which sets our ideal and sets our spiritual practices in action and it makes our life meaningful so it is very important that we should strive hard to reach that goal of peace and bliss it's a state of perpetual happiness once you reach that state you are totally illumined there is no more darkness at all there is no trace of darkness because you are enveloped in light you become the knower of everything that's the beauty of the realization of the supreme goal if you know who you really are then there is no more bondage there is no more suffering for you this is the message given by the upanishads in the last classes we have studied enough how to concentrate on our struggles struggling must be continuous unbroken struggling until and unless you reach a goal struggling should continue and the more and more you struggle the more and more you become stable that is you are building up stability which is very essential in the spiritual life sri ramakrishna was telling goswami a disciple a devotee brahma devotee later on he became the ardent devotee of shri ramakrishna he loved shri ramakrishna very much and he became adept in meditation when he was sitting inside the room in his home he saw shri ramakrishna 
and he was amazed to see him there. How did he come? It was blissful face and he was immensely pleased to have the vision of Sri Ramakrishna. And when he came to Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna smiled at him, indicating that he had come to his place to bestow grace upon him. When Goswami asked with whether he came to his home, he said, Yes, I came to your home, he said. So when you become the knower of truth, you can go anywhere. You are everywhere. You are everywhere. That is the sign of highest illumination. So he was talking to Goswami. He said, Well, unless a man is guileless, he doesn't receive the grace of God. For the realization of the truth, grace of God is very essential. To become guileless, you have to struggle, engage yourself in spiritual sadhanas, austerities, trying to remove the impurities sincerely. Of course, in spiritual life, sincerity is important. And God is gracious. He is showering His grace on the whole humanity. But then, since we are not simple, since we are not guileless, since we are not sincere to the core, we are not able to recognize that grace, we are not able to have that benefit of grace. To be born as a human being is considered as the grace of God. Instead of being born as an animal, I have been born as a human being. That means, I have got mind, I have got intellect, I have got all the senses. I can see, I can hear, I can think, I can act, I can do many things. All these things could be possible because I have been born as a human being. So, it is a tremendous grace God has given this human birth, so that we can have all these faculties, so that we can do spiritual practices in a proper way and get liberation. Liberation means free from bondage. Free from bondage means free from suffering. So, that is the grace God has given. We have been born as human beings. Secondly, longing for liberation. I want to realize the truth. That Desire. You are not desiring anything unreal. You are desiring the reality itself. 
you feel you are in some kind of bondage you are fe- you feel you are tied down by your ego by your mind by your body by external situations and surroundings and environments in so many ways you have been chained as it were so you feel miserable to be in that state of bondage so you hanker after liberation if you start hankering after liberation if you feel earnestness that is an indication of god's grace upon you because you are not longing for the name and fame or things of the world you are not longing for the uh, temporary happiness or the so called pleasures of the world but you are longing for the vision of god you are longing to realize the truth so this kind of longing is very rare if you long sincerely to know the reality that means god's grace is showering on you so that you are longing in the right way thirdly you may be longing you may have human birth you may have all these advantages yet you require guidance so if you get in touch with a spiritual teacher who has reached the highest state of truth if you are able to get the guidance from the spiritual teacher that is the immense grace so you should be able to make use of all these and then make your efforts sincerely you are making effort so that you can purify yourself purification unless you are pure unless you are guileless you will not be able to see god because he is the personification of purity <clears throat> though there is immense grace throughout the creation yet why people don't feel that grace of god why they are not enthusiastic about uh, realizing the truth answer is very simple it only shows they are involved in the unreal activities of the world they are too much involved in the game of this world they don't want to divert their attention on anything else since they are in that dreadful state of ignorance they are not drawn towards god the question of realizing the reality doesn't arise to such people they are satisfied if they get good food they are satisfied if they have got good accommodation they are satisfied if the medical care is taken care of that's all 
that's how they feel. They don't need anything else. So, when the people are totally immersed in such kind of diversions, the result is mind becomes tainted. Tainted mind cannot have the vision of God. Tainted mind cannot realize the truth. He cannot. Sri Ramakrishna explains this through a wonderful simile. As long as the child remains absorbed in its playthings, the mother keeps herself engaged in cooking and other household activities. She is satisfied. My child is playing. Let it play. She is not bothering me. So why should I bother the child? Because she loves the child, so she wants the child to spend its time in its own way. That is because of immense love of the mother towards the child. The same way God loves us so much that say we are playing in our own way, in a whimsical way. God is not bothered about that. <coughs> but time comes when the child loses all its interest in play, it doesn't want play anymore. It just it cries for the mother. Nothing but mother. In fact, I had an occasion to uh, visit a devotee's home. They had a very nice child beautiful to look and she was playing and you can I could feel what exactly guilelessness means by seeing the child I was feeling so happy more happy than the child itself seeing that guilelessness suddenly it began to cry the father was there he said Oh, if she looks the mother, the cry, his crying will stop. Until then it won't stop its crying. Just it happened to see the mother coming there, instantly the crying stopped. Because the child felt immense security in the mother. Some kind of assurance by looking at the mother. Same way, when you cry for God, just a glimpse of God is enough to give immense satisfaction and all your impurities are simply washed away. So, when the child is crying for the mother, the mother leaves everything, runs to the child. and takes it on her lap. What Sri Ramakrishna has said is literally true. I, I saw in that home how the mother was running. Uh, when, the child, when the mother heard the child crying, she ran, st stopping everything. So this simile appears to mean that renunciation comes after one gets disgusted with this world. No more of this world, worldly business. That means you are giving up and going in the opposite direction. 
not all the people who have undergone sufferings in this world get disgusted that way not all the people renounce on the other hand people will go after the worldly pleasures more and more and undergo sufferings repeatedly still they won't give up playing in the world sometimes one may feel disgusted for the time being it is just like a camel eating thorny shrubs despite profuse bleeding from its mouth so it is very important that we should engage in spiritual sadhana as i said the purpose of spiritual sadhana is to purify the mind that sal that is the purpose once that is done everything else is achieved so one becomes purified by practicing spiritual sadhana he reaches a state when his yearning for realization intensifies and divine grace dawns on him and the reality reveals itself to him shri ramakrishna has said divine grace descends upon the aspirant only after he has prayed to god with intense yearning for realization only after the aspirant had practiced spiritual disciplines shri ramakrishna had to practice 12 years of discipline to have the vision of the mother so what to speak of ordinary people like us it only shows we have to make our effort swami brahmananda ji one of the direct disciples of shri ramakrishna he loved to sit in meditation one day he was sitting in meditation he could not proceed he was feeling totally disturbed for no reason he was not comfortable he was struggling as i said earlier one should be very fortunate to have this spiritual teacher and brahman ji had wonderful spiritual teacher shri ramakrishna himself was a spiritual teacher he saw him doing meditation he found out that the disciple was in some kind of trouble it just came to him and uttered some mantras and touched his tongue immediately he was all right brahman ji himself tells that shri ramakrishna came and did this next moment i was perfectly all right my meditation went on very well shri ramakrishna gives another example there was a lake in kamarpakur kamarpakur is the birthplace of shri ramakrishna a man was removing the green scum from the lake and then he was drinking water green scum a fungus on the water when he was removing the green scum the water was clear as crystal in the same way the highest reality god satchidananda the ever blissful truth spirit consciousness he is covered by the scum of maya he who puts the green scum aside
can drink the water. Thus God realization is possible only by making little effort. On another occasion Sri Ramakrishna said, the wind of God's grace is blowing incessantly. But you know there are some sailors who are lazy. Sailors on this sea of life. They don't take advantage of the blowing breeze. But not all are lazy, some are active. The active and the strong always keep the sails of their minds unfurled to catch the friendly breeze and thus reach their destination very soon. Keeping the sails unfurled, that's a very important phrase. It signifies self-effort which enables a spiritual aspirant to catch the breeze of ever-blowing divine grace. Another saint has said, he has compared the grace to light. Grace is like light. It is always spreading its rays. Light means it must have num number of rays. Without rays how can the light? And we should only open the doors and windows so that we may get that light. If you close the windows and doors, how can you get the light even though the light is there? So opening the windows and doors, that's the important part. That is the meaning of spiritual practice. That is the meaning of getting into a state of purity to become guileless. And another important point Sri Ramakrishna tells, as long as there is any trace of ego, none can realize this supreme state. Your ego should not become more important than God. The trouble is, we are too important for us. I is too important for me than God himself. I am hurt. He proudly tells, I am hurt. So what? As if he is teaching the lesson to the world. <laughs> if you say you are hurt, what does it matter? It matters nothing to God. But it is a great loss to you because you have asserted your ego. On account of your assertion of the ego, you are feeling hurt. Because you felt hurt, you are, feeling, you are miserable. Because you are miserable, you see misery everywhere and you bring misery to others also, it is infectious. Sri Ramakrishna compares God to a policeman on night duty with a lantern. With the help of the lantern the policeman sees everybody in the night, dense dark night, but if we want to see the policeman, then we must earnestly pray to him to turn the lantern towards his own face. By such a prayer, he turns the light towards himself and the aspirant gets the vision of the Lord. Thus it is clear that the ultimate illumination comes through divine grace, which will not be derive to any aspirant who yearns for it. It will not be denied to anyone who yearns for it. Sri Ramakrishna says, let us take one step forward towards the Lord and the Lord out of pure love and compassion for us comes towards us by ten steps. What is therefore necessary is to march ahead with all sincerity of purpose and unflinching love to him and to practice 
spiritual disciplines for the purification of the heart in order to realize the goal supreme. We have got many uh, spiritual texts which deal with this matter very thoroughly. One of the Smriti, it is one of the spiritual texts in India, it says, purity is described as twofold. One is external purity and the other internal. External purity is said to be attained through clay and water. If you take a shower, apply some detergent, you feel you are purified physically. While internal purity is purification of the mind. Mind. Internal purification of the mind is achieved through prayers, through meditation, through repeating Lord's name, through selfless activity and all such things. I conclude this topic by what Swami Vivekananda has said. Wonderfully he has commented on this famous statement which is well known to everyone. Swami Vivekananda says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Then Swami Vivekananda makes a comment. This sentence alone would save mankind if all books and prophets were lost. Page 562. It was the day of Mahashtami, the most auspicious day of the worship of Durga, the Divine Mother. At Adhar's invitation, Sri Ramakrishna had come to Calcutta to see the holy image at his house. Before going there, he went to Ram's. Many devotees, including Narendra, Babaram, M. Niranjan, Vijay, Kedar, Ram and Surendra were present. Balram and Rakhal were still at Brindavan. Master said, looking at Vijay and Kedar with a smile, This is a nice reunion today. You two have the same the spiritual mood. To Vijay, Sri Ramakrishna said, well, what about Shivanath? Did you? Vijaya said, Yes, sir. He heard that you had been to his house. I haven't seen him, but I sent him word. He knows about it. Master said to Vijaya and others, Four desires have come into my mind. I shall eat fish curry cooked with eggplant. I shall visit Shivanath. The devotees will repeat the name of Hari over their beads and I shall watch them. And the tantric devotees will drink consecrated wine, eight and as worth, on the Ashtami day. And I shall watch them and salute them. Narendra was seated in front of the master. He was about twenty-two years old. While Sri Ramakrishna was talking thus, his eyes fell upon his beloved disciple. At once the master stood up and went into Samadhi. He placed one foot on Narendra's knee. He was in a deep spiritual mood, his eyes unblinking, his mind completely unconscious of the outer world. After a long time he came down to the relative plane of consciousness, but he still appeared dazed for the intoxication of divine bliss had not altogether left him. Speaking to himself in that ecstatic state, he repeated the name of God. He said, Satchidananda, Satchidananda, Satchidananda. Shall I repeat that? No. It is the day of the Divine Mother, the giver of the bliss of divine inebriation. O Mother, full of the bliss of divine inebriation, Sari Gama Padani, it is not good to keep the voice on me. It is not possible to keep it there very long. I shall keep it on the next lower note. 
There are different planes of consciousness, the gross, the subtle, the causal and the great cause. Entering the Mahakarana, the great cause, one becomes silent, one cannot utter a word. We shall stop here. So you have to become guileless if you are contemplating to see God. That is the purpose of all spiritual sadhana. That is the goal of all austerities. To become guileless. So one has to take positive steps to attain that state. That means you have to be patient. You must concentrate upon building up your spiritual life in a proper way. That is the meaning. Simply telling, uh, I must see God tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock will not help you. <laughs> One has to become pure. That is the purpose, idea. Even, in that, even when you are practicing spiritual sadhana, if you are aware of, if you are aware of your uh, goal, if you are aware of your aspiration, and that awareness will give you a great inspiration to go further further in your spiritual practices and that time will come when you will definitely have the vision of God. There is no doubt about it. Sri Ramakrishna himself tells whoever prays sincerely, his prayer will be rewarded. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quenched mighty forest fire, worldly lust raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self, drown deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that both for very souls. Various of thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my assuredness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself, give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fear of illusion is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul as I know. O thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt. For the what my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere, may all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be died all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, 
the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.